Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Suikoden 5. Let's go ahead and uh, start our start the bath scenes. Um, so we've got a few people in here. I just wanted to show what happens when you put uh, Kyle and Gavaya in without any women in the party at all. All right, Kyle, go ahead and join. I have to go with you guys? And... Gavaya? What, no ladies? That's like a day without sunshine. This is acceptable. All right. Uh, I don't believe any of the ones that I've chosen need to go into the outdoor bath, so that's fine. Some of them uh, are outdoor bath only scenes, but should be fine. Hey, Galleon, how's it going? All right, so let's make our way over there. I just wanted to show that bit because I don't think I've had a uh, I've ever put um, Kyle in the party without any women. Bath time! Indoor bath. All right, let's see which one triggers first. Hey, Kyle, I have a bone to pick with you. That is a lot of chest hair on Gavaya. Huh? What is it? How come when you flirt with the ladies, they all go, Ooh, Kyle. Are you being silly again? You're so naughty. You don't even get in trouble. When I try to talk to them, they run away. I don't get it. Uh, it's probably because you look like... Like what? <clears throat> uh, like, well, here, listen. See, when you talk to girls... You're all serious, because you're thinking about marriage, right? Maybe they don't like that kind of pressure. My theory, anyway. Don't be ridiculous. What's wrong with being serious? I'm pouring my heart and soul into trying to find a life partner. That's no laughing matter. Well, yeah, but I'm not sh so sure trying to pick up every girl in sight is the right way to do that. <laughs> well, I just don't get you. You were that other guy, Wilhelm, whatever his name is. Especially him. I think he actually enjoys giving the ladies a hard time. Neither one of you guys know how to treat a girl right. Why can't you be more sincere and earnest, like me? Yeah, how's that working out for you again? <laughs> uh. Alrighty. Net, net, next up. Indoor bath. Hey, Chef! It's tough to be a dad. Are you okay? You don't look so good. Yeah, well, I just had a big old tussle with Lun. Uh-oh. You know what? You make me real jealous sometimes. Shouldn't mean such a good girl. Cute, behaves herself. My kid never listens. Idiot pop, that's all she ever calls me. She's very spirited and quite lovely. Ever since Shun Min lost her mother, she stopped being selfish. <sighs> she stopped being a kid. When I think of her trying to act all grown up, just to spare me any trouble, I feel like an idiot father myself. Hmm. Hey, Chef, what are you doing over after work tonight? Maybe a couple of idiot fathers could sit down with a beer or two. Sure, I'd love that. I'll be waiting, waiting for you with some fine food and drink. Good man. Ah, the fathers are bonding. Hey, you guys, have you got a minute? I've got to get this off my chest. Yeah? What is it? Well, I became Levi, Levi's apprentice because I wanted to see all this great magic and whatnot. But once we came here, I found out that there are lots of other people who can show me magic for free. Yeah. I guess that's true. And then I started wondering why Lev Levi has me digging for orbs all the time instead of teaching me anything. Yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, that's Dongo, not sorry, so whatever. My master made me forge all this stupid stuff f for his rails. Oh, but it wasn't slavery, it was training. 
And yeah, I learned a few things, but still, Master just kept sticking me with all the grunt work. Hmm, yeah. I guess you've had a hard time too, huh? What about you, Gadget Boy? I'm sure you have your share of beefs you, you want to talk about. Go ahead and tell us. W what? Uh, I don't have any. Aw, oh, come on. We know your master treats you like a beast of burden. You don't have to hold back, you know? We're all apprentices here. This is the Apprentices Rebellion uh, scene. You can tell us anything. N no, really. I really don't have anything to say. Professor Babbage is really a great inventor. I'm lucky to be his apprentice. <laughs> That's sad, man. Yeah, really sad. Huh? What is? Uh, so sad. So very, very sad. What are you talking about? He's being overworked and he's not even mad about it. He's a brainwashed slave right to his empty hollow core. And the saddest part of all, he doesn't even realize it. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> Too obsessed with gears. I don't think there's anything else that I have. Oh wait, no I do. There's one other. Ah, uh, the Tower of Pride and Glass. Hey, you, mediocrity! What? A talky do re me elf What do you mean, do re me elf uh, Oh, Cornelia, what's you? Not just a mediocrity, but a rude one at that! Uh, I, I beg your pardon. Did you need something? Hm, fine. To the chase, then. Is it true you called the Howd Village Arts Community phonies? What? Oh, uh, th that was... Oh, calm down. You're embarrassing yourself. I know you said it. And we both know th they're the most stupid, pathetic, low-class mediocrities ever. Worse than creepers. Uh, uh, right, of course. The question, my dear Bastion, is whether your list of phonies happens to include me. Well, does it? Answer me! N n no uh, of course not. I've always thought you were beyond the comprehension of a man like me. Hmm, I see. Well, mediocre you may be, but an art appraiser is an art appraiser. You seem to have a discerning eye. Good, keep up the adequate work. <laughs> adequate work? I never was much of a music lover. Alright, is that uh, everyone... Yes. That is, in fact, everyone. Alright, let's go put together a different party. And see what different scenes we can get. So we're trying to maximize this. Uh, so ideally, I'd like to find groups of people that... Uh, have multiple scenes together kind of thing. Um, it is nice that uh, we, got, we have even more slots... Uh, available to put people in. Uh, I went to the wrong place. My bad. Alright, let's see. Uh, who do we want now? Um... Alright, how about... Okay, let me see if there's anything else that uh, Phelon is in. Nope. Nope. Okay. Alright, we got two of the beavers to put in. Uh, yeah. And... Yep. Alright, 
who else can we put in? How about, let's see. I don't have a whole lot, in, well, let's see. Um, well, we can put uh, combat characters into the entourage as well, so that's okay. Alright, so let's see. Nakula. Check to see if they're in any multiples. Nope. Nope. There are quite a few that uh, do not have multiple. Uh, that multiple people are, are. Well, there are quite a few of these scenes that uh, uh, the same people are not in multiple ones. It's kind of surprising to me. Oh, it, uh, to be honest, it actually almost feels like there are fewer scenes in this game than there were in 3 or 4. I could be wrong. Alright, let's see. So we got that one. Um, hmm. Alright, well, supposedly, Lorelai and Vicky are only in uh, one together, which is, again, seems weird to me. I would think that there would be more with Lorelai and Vicky, and not necessarily the two of them together, but uh, more than just one that they're, they that each one would be in. They are in one together. I suppose I could break the video when I'm doing this. Uh, I'll probably do it next time. It does take a long time to uh, go back up, swap out the party members, and then get back to the bath house. I'll keep that in mind. Oh well. Ah, what's done is done. In we go. Indoor bath, thank you very much. Don't believe any of those have uh, our outdoor bath ones. Hunters and spies. Let me just mark down the one that ones that I've done. He wasn't me. Look, quit being so stubborn. Just admit it. I know it was you. The deep twilight forest down in the ruins. You're the one I saw there. It wasn't me. How many times do I have to say it? Oh, I see. It was some other airhead with teleportation powers in your clothes. I said it wasn't me! You little... Now hold on, Lorelai. We can't just assume she's lying. Eee! Zweig? What's the matter? Don't mind me. Please continue. What is he doing here? <laughs> and Vicky gets behind Lorelai to hide. What are you doing here? Really, carry on. Just pretend I'm not here. But you are here, in the women's bath. Y yeah. Ah, so ridiculous. Lorelai, listen to reason. Say you're passing by in front of the men's bath. And you happen to overhear me talking about, oh, something to do with the Sindar. What would you do? Honestly. Honestly? Sneak in and listen. You'd what? So now we're on the same page. <laughs> Guess you're right. He's right? What are you talking about? Sorry for making such a fuss. Oh, that's alright. I'm glad we understand each other. Well, y you guys are weird. You're hardly one to talk. That's for sure. Uh, I can't take this anymore! <laughs> and there she goes. Great, you scared her off! Oh, Vicky. Indoor bath. Everything's better with Vicky. 
Hey guys, I need to ask you something. I'll be honest, I didn't realize Maroon was a guy. Oh, wh what is it? Is everything alright? You sound serious. What's it take to be a good brother? Huh? Well, Phelan's always saying I'm a bad one. Like, I don't act like a real big brother supposed to. But, hey, Maroon, you're the oldest of, what, five? And Maroon, two of them are younger than you, right? Maroon's the older? I would have, think, I would have thought Maroon was the uh, eldest of the siblings. So maybe you guys could tell me about what a big brother's supposed to do. Hmm, that's a tough one. I don't really know if our advice would really help. Beavers are different than humans. How so? Well, for one thing, we don't have fit, uh, birds in our hair. Well, we beaver, uh, well, we beavers grow up a lot faster. And we're out on our own as adults long before humans are. And since each sibling is so independent, we don't care so much about who's older than who. Now, uh, of course, we all spend time together, help each other out, that sort of thing. Hmm. You know who can help you out with this? The prince. That's a good idea. Even from a beaver's point of view, he seems like a great big brother. Well, yeah, but... Uh, he's too perfect. I can't be like him. And why don't you ask Lucerina about her brother? Then whatever he does, just do the exact opposite. <laughs> yes! Great idea! Huh? Thanks, Baroon. I'll go ask her right now. Hey, hey, wait! <laughs> Off he goes. Uh, I, I, I was only kidding. No, I don't know, it's not such a bad idea. Dirty Waters. <sighs> Damn Nethergate, I swear I'm gonna hunt down every last one of them. That damned Oboro, one of these days I'm gonna make you pay. Damned Godwins, my family's been storing up its rage for a hundred years! Worthless, filthy devils! Damn you. Damn you all to hell. Just you wait, Oboro. <laughs> you don't deserve sunlight or air! You deserve to be buried in garbage! You deserve to die choking on rotten feces at the bottom of the world's filthiest, darkest cesspit! What's going on in there? Y you know, I I'd go in there, but I think I'd just come out dirtier. Maybe you should wait a while. <laughs> they weren't even talking to each other. Uh, let's see. We have seen them all. All right. Uh, let me break it real fast, and I'll be right back with a new set of uh, people. All right, let's go ahead and uh, view the next couple scenes. Sworn to her side. Isato, Matthias, I've been meaning to talk to with you two. What about? Well, not to make you feel uncomfortable. I've always felt a kind of bond with both of you. We're kindred spirits in that we find such great satisfaction in serving a woman we admire. Hmm, so you say, but there's a difference between your servitude and mine. What do you mean? Well, you see your chosen master you see your chosen master as a woman. And Matthias has a point. To me, the or Oracle is simply the one to whom I pledge my loyalty. Gender simply doesn't factor in. And I feel the same. If Lady Isabel were a man, I would still serve her just as I do now. Oh. Now don't misunderstand, it's not a question of which way is superior. And I would certainly never question your loyalty. It's just as pure as any of ours, I'm sure. It's simply that, when it comes to loyalty, you and I view the idea from different angles. But, but, Haswar and Isabel are both very beautiful women. Is it not disrespectful to be so close to them and ignore that fact? Ah, you see, that's where we differ. Anyone can recognize and praise Lady Isabel's beauty as a woman. That's not my role, nor my desire. I offer not praise, but the whole of my body and spirit. 
I shall live and I, and I shall die as my lady commands me. And the same is true for me. But but it's more than more like a slave than a servant. To be called a slave to one like her, there is no greater honor, nor higher praise. Now, if you'll excuse me, Lady Isabel's nap should be ending in a moment, and I should return to the Oracle. <laughs> Not quite what you expected, was it, Din? Strong and silent. Kylie looks weird without a hat. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah. Not done. Nope. Okay. <laughs> it's hot. Oh, uh, all uh, was fun. All right, let's see. What's next? Go the virtue of con conviction. Why is Ghosh sobbing? I, I'm I'm not I'm not voice acting the sobbing. What's the matter? Are you hurt? No. I, I'm, I'm fine. In Lord Lake, until just recently, the best I could do was, sim was wipe my body with a barely damp cloth. Now here I am in such a huge bath. I, I can't help it. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sorry? Why? When my hometown was in trouble, all I did was stay at my post as Queen's Knight. That's the kind of man I am. That must be why she got fed up with me. No, she was never fed up with you. You had your convictions, she had hers. That's how I see it. Hmm. Well, whoever she is, I think Murad's probably right. Looking back, the people of Lord Lake were the exact same way. About their convictions, I mean. We could have taken the easy way out and run away somewhere, but we all would have rather died than give up Lord Lake. That's what convictions are all about, don't you think? Well... So I bet she understands about your convictions, too. You know, Ghosh, I think you might be right. Alright, let me go ahead and pause it, put together a different party. I think that's, uh, everyone... Yes. Alright, so I'll be right back. Oh. Everyone has a silver dot next to them. I'm not sure what that means, other than, I mean, I'm guessing that you get a bonus when you have bathed. Maybe that's the toasty status or something like that? I don't know. Huh. Well, you never really noticed it before. Ah, well, it's not like it matters that much. Alright, let's uh, get the last batch for this episode. What girls want? Ah, guy, there's a guy in here! What'd you just say? Oh, Sabala, sorry, my mistake. You don't... You don't look like a guy, you're not that small. That... that is... Three sizes there, huh? Oh, okay. Say it again, I dare ya! You think you're all special just cause yours are a little bit bigger than mine? What in the world do you eat that makes them all puffy like that? All the same stuff as you. You've been eating at my place for years and years. Sorry it didn't work for you. Yeah. Ah! Hey, both of you, knock it off. Sit down and grow up. Um. Maybe you shouldn't say grow up in this context right here. Just saying. Oh, um. S sorry, Mom. 
Great, now Mum's all mad at me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, hey, I get it now. What? Yours got so big because you drank that stuff when you were little. You! You! What the? In front of my... What are you? I can't believe you just said that! What? I'm serious. That's how it happened. Hmm. You could drink some, too, if you like, Subala. What? M mom Ah, it sure brings back memories. You know, I told him it wasn't for kids, but... Lund's father said it tasted so good she she had to have some. Uh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> but of course, it was too bitter for her, and she cried and cried until her eyelids got all puffy. So maybe you're right. Maybe drinking that stuff is exactly what gave Lund those big round eyes. Why don't you both drink up? The Admiral's tea is just the thing to soothe frayed nerves. <laughs> you were talking about eyes? You were talking about tea? <laughs> ah, good times. Cute and cuddly with Lou, Marina, and Jean. Whoa, Jean, you're all vava voom, so beautiful. Yeah, you're so grown up. You're. Wow. Oh, thank you. You're very cute, both of you. What? You get to be all vava voom and we're just cute? So not cool. Yeah, how come you're beautiful and we're cute? Hey, it's a compliment. No one's ever called me cute, and I wish they would. Oh, come on. Even growing up, all the hot, hot boys had to had to be all squee. You're so cute, Jean. Yeah, you're so beautiful now. You must have been the cutest kid around. No, it's true. I've really never been called cute. Never? Hmm. Aha! There's only one answer. The ugly stick must have gone all whack, whack, whack up, up and down your face back then. L Lou, come on, Jean. The ugly stick had its way with you. Admit it. Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> well, if the ugly stick had its way with you and you ended up all vava voom, then I'm gonna be vava vava voom. So what's your secret? How'd you beat the ugly stick? Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Ooh, you must have gone all zap, zap, zap to the ugly, to the ugly with your magic. Give me the spell. Give me, give me, give me. <laughs> oh, Lou. She is such a 14-year-old girl. Indoor bath. And the last one for this episode. Kathari, I have a special favor to ask. Let me guess, you want to spar with me, right? You're very astute. Well, to the point, then. You carry the first gun I've ever seen. And this is embarrassing. If I came across someone like you in a fight, I wouldn't know what to do. So, pardon me for asking, but I have to know. Can you fight a gun with a sword? Um, I think Indiana Jones proved no. And if so, how? Hey! I came here to get away from talk like that. Can you not discuss violence in the bath? Oh, uh, apologies. That was inconsiderate of me. Hm. You humans, why are you all so barbarous? If you're not out killing someone, you're talking about killing someone. You make those horrible guns. You think guns are scary? Elven arrows are worse by a long shot if you ask me. How can you say that? There's only a handful of guns in the world, let alone on the battlefield, so they haven't killed many people. Now, how many people do you think have died from arrow fire? Hundreds? Thousands? Is that not horrible? You're just splitting hairs. Then tell me, what makes... what about guns makes them horrible to you? W what about them? They make inexplicable sounds and belch fire and shoot iron bullets. What could be worse? Technically, it's lead, not iron. But basically, she's right. 
Wait, pardon? Simply put, simply put, guns are inexplicable. They're an unknown. People fear that, especially in a weapon. You're saying guns are merely a bluff tactic? Pretty much so far. Guns are still under development. Your gun is, like, more modern than the other ones in Suikoden 1 and 2. Guns are... They don't fire as quickly as arrows or as accurately. Uh, which I think is also a point with Kathari. She can't actually get multiple hits with her gun. Uh, she can only ever hit once. Not sure if you could put a double strike orb on her and get anything extra out of it. Probably not, but anyway. Once you know that, they're not all that difficult to deal with. I, I see. I understand. Thank you for the insight. Don't mention it. But here's the thing. You don't carry a gun without learning everything about it. So if the bluff tactic doesn't work, we have backup plans. All kinds. Well... So wait! Does that make everything you said completely useless? Just slide on off the screen there. Kathari, wait! Barbarous. Every last one of them. And I believe that is everyone in uh, the group. So when we uh, return in the next episode, we'll have more batches of people to uh, view bath scenes for. See you then, everyone. <laughs>